Welcome to the Exodoku training video number 74. In this video, the two string kite puzzle solving technique will be revisited, but this time using links and chaining in the discussion. This video has two prerequisite videos. The first is DX Sudoku training video number 55 on the types of Sudoku links. And the second is DX Sudoku training video number 31 on the two string kite puzzle solving technique. This video has four parts. The first part is a discussion of the two string kite pattern. The second part is a discussion on how the two string kite logic works. The third part is an improved two string kite search algorithm using links. And the fourth part is a discussion on how the two string kite pattern is a variant of the X chain. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the cells having a possible six candidate are now highlighted. We found a two string kite pattern now highlighted. A two string kite must have two sets of either or links, which are perpendicular to each other, and two of the cells must share the same three by three block. The kill zone is defined by the two cells not located in the same 3 by 3 block. In this example, the kill zone is cell 5, 2, now outlined in red, and the target candidate to kill in the kill zone is highlighted in dark red. A two-string kite is known as a single-digit pattern. In this example, the two-string kite is using the possible 6 candidate as the single digit. Next, the logic for how the two-string kite works will be demonstrated. To understand the logic for how the two-string kite works, all we have to focus on are the possible candidates found in the two cells defining the kill zone. In this example, for the two cells making up the kill zone, we have five possible numbers to consider. Let's first assume cell 1, 2 has a value of 1 as shown. Because there's an either-or link with cell 2, 9, cell 2, 9 must have a value of 6. Having a 6 in cell 2, 9 means we cannot have a value of 6 in cell 3, 7 in block 3. Since there is an either-or link between cell 3, 7 and cell 5, 7, we must have a value of 6 in cell 5, 7. Having a 6 in cell 5, 7 means the target candidate in the kill zone is killed. Next, we consider the logic for when we have a value of 2 in cell 2, 2 as shown. As you can see, we have the same logical result where the target candidate in our kill zone is killed. And if we have a value of 6 in cell 2, 2, our target candidate in the our kill zone is immediately killed as shown. Next, we consider what happens when we have a value of 3 in cell 5, 7 as shown. We have a similar chain of logic where we end up having a 6 in cell 2, 2. This results in our target candidate in our kill zone being killed. And the last scenario to consider is when we have a value of 6 in cell 5, 7 as shown. This immediately kills the target candidate in our kill zone. So in all five possibilities with the two cells making up our kill zone, the result is our target candidate in the kill zone is being killed. The logic of the two-string kite effectively creates a bidirectional strong link between cell 2, 2 and cell 5, 7. If cell 2, 2 is not 6, then cell 5, 7 has a value of 6. And if cell 5, 7 is not 6, then cell 2, 2 has a value of 6. The other interesting scenario to consider is what happens when we have a value of 6 in cell 3, 9. The sequence of logic results in having a value of 6 in both cells making up the two-string kite's kill zone as shown. There is an interesting point I would like to make with having a 6 in both cells with the bidirectional strong link between them. Bernard Habiger, the author of the Sudoku program Hadoku, has an excellent set of wiki pages on puzzle solving techniques, terminology, and chaining. Most of the terminology and content of the DX Sudoku training video series is based on Bernard Habiger's way of thinking about how to solve Sudoku puzzles. Since YouTube will not let an author embed hyperlinks in the video's description, search on Hadoku Chaining from Google and click on the first link that comes up. Within the wiki page on Chaining, Bernard writes, if two entities are strongly linked, they cannot be false at the same time. He then writes, that means if one of them is false, then the other has to be true. 
both true is only possible in very advanced types of links. Both values being true really confused me the first time I read this because how can both values be true when you can only have one value set for any given number within a single house? I believe the two cells making up the two string kites kill zone in this example is the case Bernard was referring to when both cells participating in a strong link relationship are both true at the same time. Next, an updated search algorithm for the two string kite will be demonstrated. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the cells having a possible two candidate are now highlighted. We identify a pair of either or links where two cells share the same 3x3 three three block. We identify the kill zone and a target candidate to kill. The non possible candidate is removed from the puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the cells having a possible five candidate are now highlighted. We identify a pair of either or links where two cells share the same 3x3 three three block. We identify the kill zone and a target candidate to kill. The non possible candidate is removed from the puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the cells having a possible nine candidate are now highlighted. We identify a pair of either or links where two cells share the same 3x3 three three block. We identify the kill zone and a target candidate to kill. The non possible candidate is removed from the puzzle. Consider the following Sudoku in progress. All the cells having a possible three candidate are now highlighted. We identify a pair of either or links where two cells share the same 3x3 three three block. We identify the kill zone and a target candidate to kill. The non possible candidate is removed from the puzzle. Next, the two string kite example will be demonstrated as an X chain sequence. We return back to our original example. All the cells having a possible six candidate are now highlighted in light green. We begin our exchange sequence with a possible six candidate in cell two comma two. The next chain in the sequence is the strong link between the possible six candidate in cell two comma two and the possible six candidate in cell two comma nine. The second link in the chain is a weak link between the possible six candidate in cell two comma nine and the possible six candidate in cell three comma seven now showing. The third link in the sequence is a strong link between the possible six candidate in cell three comma seven and the possible six candidate in cell five comma seven now outlined. As you know from the X chain prerequisite video, after the third link, any cell candidate seeing both purple and green colors is a non possible candidate. As with all X chains, what is being shown is either the purple cells are on or the green cells are on. But in either case, target candidates sharing a house with cells of both colors are non-possible candidates. As stated previously, essentially what we end up having is a bidirectional strong link between the starting cell and ending cell in the chaining sequence. Besides the two-string kite, there are several different types of X-chain variants. Generally, when doing puzzles, I will purposely look for X-wings skyscrapers, and two-string kites because they are so easy to spot. But I do not purposely look for turbot fish or empty rectangles. For turbot fish and empty rectangles, I just look for X-chains and find those two in the process. An empty rectangle is just an X-chain which has a group node or nodes and a set of two group links. A turbot fish is just an X-chain with exactly four cells and three links. Since all two-string kites are composed of four cells and three links, they could also be labeled as turbot fish at the same time. This completes DX Sudoku training video number 74. Please support DX Sudoku. Thank you for watching.